Father, thank you so much for letting us come here today to get ready for your Passover. And I thank you for letting us just to be able to celebrate your feasts. And I thank you for the new seasons, the spring, the renewing of the earth. And I thank you, Father, that through your Passover, that Yeshua was willing to, to go to the cross for us and that he died for us so that we no longer are slaves to sin, but instead we can walk in freedom by just choosing to believe in you. And I thank you, Father, for that. And I pray that you just allow us to just be able to present your feast days to whoever is listening in a way that honors you and um, makes sense. And we ask that you will help us to only teach truth and we surrender the children's ministry here to you and ask that you bless it. In Yeshua Messiah's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Miss Mary Jane, I believe, is going to start. All right. So, we've been talking about the events leading up to Passover. And um, we left off last week with them being at the Last Supper and Yeshua telling the disciples that, you know, my time is coming. I'm going to be leaving here, gone from you guys, and you will all lose your faith. And it says in scripture that Yeshua said, tonight you will lose your faith because of me. It is written in the scriptures. This is a prophet, right? Yeah. Had written in the Torah. I will kill the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So the sheep are the disciples that they're referring to. And they'll all scatter because the shepherd, Yeshua, will be killed but after i arise from death i will go ahead of you to galilee so peter in response to yeshua saying this he says well no i'll never lose faith in you and yeshua tells him i tell you it's true before the crow oh, the crow we did this last week oh, before yeah. the rooster crows three times i tell you or you'll deny me three times before the rooster crows so that's kind of where we left off last week so the next events that happen is, um, and this is the same, or sorry. So the next event that happens is Yeshua takes three of his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane? Gethsemane. Gethsemane. <laughs> Gethsemane. Um, and this story that I'm talking about is reflected in, in three different books. It's reflected in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so Yeshua goes to the garden with his followers. He tells the disciples to wait for him. So he takes James, John, and Peter with him to pray. Um, and at this point, you know, Jesus was, he had the Holy Spirit with him, but he was still human. So he was facing the knowledge that he was going to die soon. And you got to kind of take a second to think about that because that would be an overwhelmingly sad thing or, you know, that's scary to think about. And so um, his heart became full of sadness and he wanted to go pray. He wanted to go pray and be alone, spend some time with his father. And he asked um, James, John and Peter to kind of stand guard stay awake and pray. And he's going to go off just a little further by himself and pray. So Yeshua falls to the ground and prays, my father, if it is possible, do not give me this cup of suffering, but do what you want, not what I want. And so Yeshua gets done praying, returns back to where Peter and John and James are, and they're sleeping. And so he tells them, well, wake up. What are you doing? I asked you to stay awake and guard and pray while I'm over here praying. And he tells them, you know, stay awake. Pray for the strength against temptation from the adversary. Your spirit wants to do what is right, but your body is weak. So Yeshua goes off again. He tells them, please stay awake. And he goes off again a little further away from them and prays again. And he says to God, my father, if it is not possible for this painful thing to be taken from me, and if I must do it, then I pray what you want will be done. So again, we're seeing that Jesus is, he's suffering, he's scared, he's all the, all the, all the thoughts that you would have when you know that you're facing your own death, but he still trusts that 
what God wants is better than what he knows is right or better than what he wants. And so he knows that there's a, a greater purpose here. And so even though he's struggling with all these feelings and sadness, he still gives his life to God and, and puts his faith in, in what his father wants him to do. And so after he gets done praying for the second time, he returns to Peter and James and John and they're asleep again. So he wakes them up. And he's like, what are you guys doing? I asked you to stay awake and pray. Like your, your bodies are weak. Your human bodies are weak. And I want you to pray for me and pray for what's about to happen. And so he left them again. So he keeps giving them the opportunity to, they still get to make a choice about what they're going to do in this situation, which is the same for all of us. We know what our father wants from us. We know what Yeshua died for, but we still have a choice. Are we going to we going to kind of fall asleep or are we going to take that opportunity to pray and be with the father as much as possible? So he leaves them again. He gives them that choice and he goes off and prays again. And during the third time he goes to pray, an angel from heaven appeared to Yeshua and ministered to him, brought him comfort. So Yeshua was full of pain, prayed even more. The angel comforted him. And as he prayed, it says sweat dripped from his face as if he were bleeding. And then the next thing that happens is going to be, are you doing it or Danielle? Miss Danielle. Rest. So from this point on, hold on, let me just, I'm going to look at y'all's faces when I do this. Well, that's really intense, right? He's praying. And I mean, how many of you have ever sat and somebody asked you to stay awake and you just like slowly start to drift off being like, I can't do it. My eyes just can't do it. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what, what the disciples were facing. Like, I know this is really important, Yeshua. I know you've asked me to, to be awake, but I just, I can't do it. So obviously Yeshua is a little, you know, he understands. He says, I understand your flesh is weak, but come on. <laughs> um, but we know what happens next. Yeshua says, time has come and when I read that part I can almost it's almost like you can sense like the, the atmosphere changes you know how sometimes like you're just kind of going through your day and something happens and all of a sudden you're like laser focused you're like whoa something's happening and I can just imagine that Yeshua says the time has come and that all the disciples go Oh, something's happening. So one of the disciples um, had a plan, right? He was going to betray Yeshua. So he went off after the Passover, after Yeshua said, go do what you, go do what you need to do. And he comes back with some of the temple leaders and some other men to arrest him. Uh, do any of you remember how he, how he does that? How does he point out who Yeshua is? Havala. He kissed him on the neck. Yes, he gave him a kiss. That was the sign that he is Yeshua. And some other scriptures actually say that it is, um, that they just ask, who is Yeshua? And Yeshua says, right here, right here. <laughs> um, and they want to arrest him. And there's one disciple um gets a little passionate who's the one that we know is kind of passionate for yeshua that would be peter gets a little passionate he's like whoa not my, not my master not my yeshua not happening so he draws the sword and whacks off an ear of the who, who is it like the, the a, a priest's ear and um yeshua goes whoa Nope. Nope. Yeshua says, put your sword back into place. All who use swords will be killed with swords. Surely, you know, if I could ask my father and he would give me more than 12 armies of angels, but this thing must happen this way so that it will be as scripture says. So, you know, I, I can imagine the, the people being, why? 
I don't, uh, what? <laughs> what, what just happened? <laughs> All of Yeshua's followers at this point start running away because they're, they're, they're just confused. They're scared. What is happening? Yeshua's being arrested. He could stop them. He's not stopping them. What is happening? We thought he was the son of God. What? He was supposed to be the king. He's supposed to take on the throne. What is happening? What is happening? And so they run away, scared. And Peter follows a short distance behind. And at this point, he starts denying Yeshua because he's afraid that people will recognize him. And some people do start recognizing him. And he's like, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't, I don't, I don't know him. And how many of you, be honest, you don't have to answer me right here, but how many of you, if you're faced with something like that, would you be bold and brave and stand up? Because that's something that I would want to say. I would want to say that I say, yes, I follow Yeshua. That's my master. Yes. Or is there something inside your little heart that goes, oh, I'm very scared. No, I don't know him. No, I don't know him. That's called self-preservation. -preserv that's the flesh that was trying to keep yourself safe because it knows, oh boy, oh and this is where it, Peter shows his humanity. Peter has been following Yeshua so passionately for all these years. But now he goes, mm, don't know him. Nope, I don't know him. Nope, I don't know him. Anyway, so at this point, Yeshua has been brought before the high priest, um, you know, the temple leaders, and they start accusing him of things and... The people lie, they can't find anything, but then Yeshua says something. And he says, um, when Yeshua's asked, she got frozen. She's gonna be upset again. Miss Danielle does not like it when she gets frozen. She'll be back with us shortly. Here she comes. <laughs> okay, might want to restate the last 10 seconds. <laughs> All right, I said that at this point, <laughs> Yeshua is being brought before the high priest and they can't find anything. And then they ask him, Yeshua, are you the son of God? And he says, in some, some place it says, you said it. Or in this place it says, yes, I am. But I tell you, in the future, you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of God, the powerful one. And you will see him in the, in the clouds in the sky. And at this point, the priests are like, blasphemy! You are using the, the name of God in vain. Like, how dare you? You're saying you're the son of, son of God? What? They can't see it. They don't want to see it. And so this to them is enough to just, nope, Yeshua. Hold on, Hold on. Danielle, you said something important, but the internet went funny. Repeat the last sentence or two. From what? Like five seconds of what you were saying. She's like, what you said, so say? Jesus was brought before the high priest and. Yeah. Finish. Oh, it's, it was brought before the high priest he said I can't remember. he said it's your words not mine are you the son of man he said it's yes. your words not mine right and then all this whole scripture and at this point the priests think this is enough to to take you out you are using the word you're using the name of god in vain this is enough to take you out we don't mm -mm, nope and but here's the thing there's Romans in the country. And so they have to first go to the, the leader of Rome before they can execute anybody. So they go to Pilate and Pilate very quickly realizes this man is innocent. He has not done the things that the Jewish leaders are accusing him of. So he proposes something. On feast days, what they do is they set one prisoner free. So he gives a choice to the crowd, Barabbas or Yeshua. Who do the people choose? The actual criminal or the person that they think is gonna be the criminal? Alessa, do you know? Um, uh, Barabbas. Barabbas, yes, they wanna set Barabbas free. Well, at this point, well, there you go. Barabbas is set free and Yeshua is unfortunately led to Golgotha, 
And I think from here on, Miss Katie is going to take over. Yeah, so um, when, when Pilot um, said, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this, or are you sure? He, he, he didn't feel like Yeshua had anything or Yeshua had done anything wrong. And even while Yes um, Pilate was talking, his wife came to him and said, you know, I had a dream. Don't mess with that man. You don't, don't, don't mess with that man. Don't, don't sentence him to death. So Pilate washed his hands in water saying like, this is on this. I wash my hands as if this is what you guys want. I take no responsibility. And so he tells the, the soldiers, beat him, beat him and take, crucify him. And so they did. So they beat him and then they're getting ready to take him to, to go to Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. So you can hear Miss Danielle and I say a different accent. So who knows like which way is correct, but I am very Southern. So most likely it's me who's repeating it. Golgotha. Oh, who's saying it wrong so i'd love to to point out our our, our cultural differences sometimes. i know I, I was just gonna say let me not say the name of the garden because it's gonna sound very strange to y'all <laughs> i was just thanking uh mary jane i didn't have to say uh the other names so. gethsemane. gethsemane yeah there's a th in there that you just um, it doesn't process right anyway <laughs> off topic let's get back on topic so they're taking Yeshua to the place of the skull where he's going to be crucified and um, they beat him. And so after someone's been beat, can you walk very well? Not really. Can you carry a heavy cross or a heavy stick that they're going to use to, to um, crucify you? No. So a man, a father was walking by. He was on his way back into town and um, his name was Simon and he was a father. It says he was a father. So I'm assuming his sons were with him. And that a soldiers made him carry the cross for Yeshua. And I was just sitting there thinking about that, what it would be like, because soldiers are scary, especially if they're in this mob mentality and they're, someone's getting arrested and they're like, carry, carry this cross for him. And, you know, they might not have been, been very nice to Simon either. And his children probably had to follow. And um, he had to take the cross for Yeshua to the place where he would be crucified. And um, so Yeshua is crucified. He's put on the cross and um, the soldiers, they try to give Yeshua some wine mixed with uh, one scripture said myrrh and the other one said, what do you remember the name? It was gall, gall or something. So they tried to give him something like that, but Yeshua refused to take it. And um, he eventually prays while he's on the cross father forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Forgive these people for, for attacking your son. And this, the soldiers are, are just really, they have no understanding. They weren't raised up reading the Torah. They, they truly have no understanding, but they see Yeshua's clothes and it's worth something. So they start gambling to get his clothing. And so they cast lots for it. So they are basically stealing his clothes because he's about to die. So he's not going to need them. So they're, they're, they're seeing who gets the goodies of Yeshua's stuff. And then um, they take a crown and um, of thorns and they put it on his head with a sign. And they put a sign with over the cross that they crucified and says, this is the king of the Jews. And Yeshua was crucified. And beside him were two other criminals. They are being uh, crucified beside him and um one of them uh winds up having a little bit of compassion for Yeshua and the other one is making fun of Yeshua so they're all three on the cross laying there and one is moved by compassion seeing that mm, I don't think he should be here and the other one is is just saying if you're the king then do this and if you are all this so he's totally mocking Yeshua and as Yeshua is up on the cross he, he looks down and he, he says to his mother and he says to one of his disciples and, and he makes arrangements for his mother to be taken care of. He's like, this will be your mother from now on. He is on the cross y'all and, and he is taking care of his mother and making sure that she's going to have a place of comfort. I, I can't imagine the anguish and the pain that he's in the middle of and he's still taking care of the people he loves. And he's providing for his mother. It, it blows my mind. 
And um, this, the soldier that or the criminal that was mocking Yeshua on the cross was making fun of him. The other one said, don't mock him. He doesn't deserve to be here. We deserve to be here, but he does not. And he even said, I, I, I hope you remember me because he was moved and he knew Yeshua. He knew that Yeshua was the king. And he said, remember me. And Yeshua said, and this is a criminal. This is someone who's done something awful, right? Potentially. And Yeshua says, today, you will be with me today. And he does. And that tells you that God can forgive us for anything. Yeshua forgives us for anything. And that blows my mind because I like to, I like to calculate sin and say like, oh no, that's a bad sin. Like mm -mm, God can't forgive that person because that person is so full of evil. God can't forgive them, but God could. If, if Pilate, not if Pilate, if Pharaoh had repented in his heart, hadn't have been made hard and he hadn't have hardened his heart against God, Yeshua would have forgiven Pharaoh. Yeshua would have forgiven Pharaoh. So he would forgive, he would forgive anyone who would repent and truly mean it and, and recognize that Yeshua is Lord. But he's he remember he remind he remembered he said that he saves the one one criminal. And um, people sh are shouting and are making fun of Yeshua. And they're like, if you're the king, if you're really the king, come down from the cross. You need to come down. And um, they just made fun of him. And at three o'clock or at noon, the whole country, the whole county becomes dark at noon. So Yeshua's on the cross. And at noon, all of a sudden, you can't see the sun anymore. It's blot out. All of a sudden, it gets dark. And this darkness lasts for three hours. It's dark for three hours. In like, the middle of the day. In the middle of the day. And I know you guys have experienced an eclipse before, but when we have a total, when we had that total eclipse, do you guys remember about how many minutes it lasted, the darkness lasted? Depends on where you were in the country. <laughs> I know for us, it was like 12 minutes. Because in, in it, the, the, I guess like the longest point of it was in Columbia, South Carolina. It was like 15 so minutes, or just barely. like minutes. So not hours. And mm -hmm. Alessa, do you have something you want to say? No, I was thinking that maybe the darkness lasted until he died or something like it that. It did. It did. It lasted for three hours. But I just wanted to just remind you that just recently we've had an eclipse. That was when the moon or the sun, I don't know which one it was, but the, the I think the moon the went sun. in front of the, yeah. yeah, the moon covered the sun and we had total darkness and it was only for us, like just a short amount of time, but this lasted for 12, I'm sorry, for three hours. And like when darkness comes and there is no um, sun, like you'll hear the crickets, you're going to hear all the night things start. So for three hours, it was like, it was like dark. It was like midnight. And then Yeshua cries out in the midst of that. And he says, um, he's thirsty. And someone offers Yeshua a drink from off of a sponge and a stick. And then he cries out again. And he says, it is finished. And, and um, different, different gospels says that he says different things, but it is finished. And then he breathes his last breath and it is done. And at that moment, not only is it dark, but all of a sudden, the curtain in the temple is ripped into two. Rocks, the earth and the rocks shook and broke apart. So an earthquake occurred. Graves open and many of God's people who had died were all of a sudden raised again and were walking the earth. And the events were recorded and it happened in such a way the guards who were guarding Yeshua were looking and they looked up and they were like, they were convinced they had just done something wrong. They were like, this is the king. This is truly the king. And they just were, I can't imagine the weight and the gravity realizing that all of a sudden that you participated in help crucify the king and all this stuff happens. And so it's getting later and they have to get ready for Shabbat. They have to get ready for uh, Passover to have our Shabbat to happen and they don't want to leave these criminals up and so uh the criminals beside them they haven't passed but Yeshua has and so they they go and they 
they go to break the criminals, the two of their men's legs, and they were going to do it to Yeshua. And they said, no, 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 don't do that. And instead, they pierced his side where blood and water came out. And it actually fulfilled scripture when this happened. And in Exodus 12, 46, and Psalms 34, it'll say none of his bones will be broken. None of Yeshua's bones are broken. And also in Zechariah 12, 10, Revelations 1, 7, and Psalm 22, verses 16 and 17, they basic, it says that they will look at the one they pierced and his, you know, and they pierced him. And so when they took it, then they took the, they took them down and Joseph, a Sanhedrin asked, he was one of the priests, part of the priests, but he didn't agree with um, Yeshua being crucified. He, he was, he asked for Yeshua's body. So this man, family or people he's, he's working with, people he's serving with crucified Yeshua and he and he's moved with compassion and he didn't agree with it and he says I want to provide a proper burial for him because we did wrong to him and I'm going to try to do a little I'm going to honor him now and so he takes his body to bury it Yeshua was laid in a tomb I think it also said that um oh gosh I just need Nehemiah Nicodemus. Nicodemus came and brought like herbs and what all was it, Danielle? Um, that we read play, like sweet smelling perfumes and spices for his body. Yeah. So Nicodemus comes and brings all this stuff, and they go and they anoint his body. They prepare it for burial, and they um, put him in a tomb. He was laid in a tomb that was cut out of a rock, and they rolled a stone in the um, against the entrance of the tomb, and Yeshua died. And, you know, his followers, they had scattered or some watched from afar. They're afraid. They didn't understand what has happened. Um, they were just beyond themselves because they thought he said he's the king, but he just died. Like we said before, they expected Yeshua to come with swords and to fight the Romans and put them down. But Yeshua said, he who dies by the sword, who, he who fights by the sword will die by the sword. And Yeshua went to the cross like a lamb being led to slaughter, just like they did at Passover, where they took the Passover lamb and they, they killed it and they put the door, the blood on the doorpost. Yeshua was willing to be led to cruc be crucified for his blood to be poured out so that if we do like Abraham and just believe, we will be given righteousness. All we have to do is be like the father of our faith and believe in Yeshua. And Yeshua died so that we can take, supernaturally take the blood and, and place it on our heart so that we no longer have to be slaves to sin. So he covered us. He covers us so that we no longer have to be separated from God, from the law of sin and death by just believing so we go back to our like abraham our father of our faith and we believe and we are given all the things that yeshua deserved we deserve none of it and all we have to do is believe now for me this is the saddest part of the story it's it's exciting but it's sad because they crucified my king and he was beaten and he was bruised and he did all this stuff but it's so cool how in so many ways it represents the Passover Seder, the Passover that we're supposed to remember what God did by delivering the, the Egyptians out of, the, I'm sorry, the Israelites out of Egypt, Egypt, <sighs> getting all confused. So um, it's just really cool that he uses all these things to symbolize and it just if you look for it you see yeshua in the feast you see yeshua in the scriptures and he fulfilled it and he went to the cross he was very sad to do it but he did it anyway because he loves us um the other thing guys if you think about it you know the reason that we're talking about all of this is because we know the next part right yeah. we know the next part but to them can you imagine being a disciple, believing all these things that this is, this is the son of God. Yes. 
And he dies on the cross like a common man. To them, the story ended here. How do you think they felt? Very confused. Very <laughs> confused. Very scared. Very frightened. But very confused. I sad. Thought, so sad. I thought he was the son of God. He can't die. This is where it ends. And the only reason, the only reason that we can talk about his salvation and what he did and how great and awesome it is, is because we know the next part. But the disciples didn't know that yet. So maybe that's something to think about in the next coming hours before you celebrate the Passover. Think about that. Imagine that you're a disciple and you don't know the next part. You don't know what, you don't know the next part. Mm -hmm. All you know is the one that you served. All you know, the one that you followed for like three years is gone. Gone like that. What just happened? You put your whole life there. You thought that this was real. Would you start doubting yourself? Would you start doubting who you believed and what you believed? I would. I would for sure start doubting because I didn't understand. It says, scripture says the disciples didn't understand. They didn't see what was written until he came back. Yeah. And, and see, he told them. Now the next yeah, time saying, yeah. when we talk about the resurrection. Hold on a second, Danielle. Danielle. Yeah. Oh, like he told them at the dinner that tonight you will lose your faith because of me. It's written in the scriptures that I would kill the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But it's like, I guess the, the chaos of the situation of him being taken, crucified, none of them really. The trauma of it. Yeah, they didn't, it. they didn't put that together until he came back. And then he said <laughs> later that he would go ahead of them to Galilee. But so they sat in moment of just losing a friend he's you know and all these things they've lost his friend and for three days oh can you guys hear me uh you guys were frozen um so he we are saying the disciples were in the trauma of losing their friend um just losing their leader seeing him crucified in such a brutal way and um just not knowing what to do they lose hope and for three days three days they sat in that and yeshua is in that process, he's conquering the grave. He's taking the keys from the enemy. He is going to raise again. And we are, and that's the part of first fruits and the resurrection resurrection Sunday, which a lot of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ will celebrate next Sunday as Easter Sunday. And we get to celebrate the resurrection and we call it, um, and it's first fruits. And so, um, we will talk more about that, and uh, we will eat, we will not have an actual Zoom meeting next week, but we are going to send you something special in the email, so be looking for an email from us so that we can um, give you a little uh, celebration and help you to continue to celebrate your feast days, but we won't meet this is the first week of the month, but we're going to send you something special in your email, so be checking for your email. Um, so that you guys can still see something special from us. Um, but, you know, I think about it tonight at your Passover Seder dinner. Think about Yeshua and how he was willing to go through something so horrible that the enemy thought he won, but God said, Mm-mm, I win. Yeshua wins. And just by believing in him, we win. And so there's nothing we can do to earn it nothing. And it's just awesome that he, he cares so much for us. And so don't you guys want to say thank you to Yeshua for just being willing? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So tonight say thank you. And I hope you guys really think about that. It's not as much about the Israelites coming out, except for God setting it up so that he could show his greater exodus and his greater salvation, because now we are saved from slavery. We don't have to be enslaved in sin and to the law of sin and death anymore. We are free. We are free. Isn't that what, like, when it says that he, Yeshua cries out, the curtain in the temple is torn into two. Wasn't that curtain, like, representative? It separated 
what the priests from the common people yeah yeah, yeah so the ho- the ho- it, it, it is the holy of holies the only person that could go in there was the high priest but yeah. who in that moment of yeshua dying became the high priest him and later he says you can only get to the father if you get through me i am the door so he tore it because we get access to the father straight mm-hmm. straight to him nothing stopping us yeah. just by believing and praying and putting exactly. our faith in him and getting exactly. to know jesus we have access to god we don't yeah. have to care for an animal and then walk them for a week or a month to jerusalem and yeah. then watch this poor animal be slaughtered and deal with the offerings of sin and the offerings of all the offerings that were involved and, we just and the other thing is is that nobody could could there's no amount of gold no amount of work, no amount of anything that we could create here on this earth that would satisfy this, that Yeshua did it, that it was something that God did. And we can't say, look at my, what my goal did. My goal had nothing to do with it. My God did this. And that is the coolest thing. We have freedom and we know the rest of the story. So we don't have to be sad. We can just sit and marvel at the obedience that he had to God and the love that he had for us. And that is what you should think about at your Passover tonight. And the more I think about it, the more I want to cry because I know I don't deserve it. And I'm so thankful, so thankful that God would allow his son to do that, even if it was just for me, or even if it was just for one of you. He would, he would go to that cross again because he thinks even one person's life being saved is worth it. If the only person was that criminal on the cross that said, remember me, Yeshua would have done it again. That's all. So this is what we, this is what our faith is all about. It's about Yeshua. It's about Yeshua. And that is the most important thing. We can never lose sight of that. And I pray and I pray that God will just put that in so this seed so deep down into your soul that as you grow, you will never, ever depart, that you guys will all be. And I'm just going to pray, Father, I just pray that these children will all be mighty young warriors, that this generation will be used to spread your gospel and talk about how awesome it is to serve you and to celebrate your Passover, and to celebrate your feast days. Father, we thank you that we are no longer slaves, but we are free in you and clothed in righteousness because of what you did. And I pray that these young ones and anyone listening will just remember that, and they will go out and be the light, and they will share the gospel and be used for you. Lord, don't ever let them turn away. Help them keep their eyes on you. And we pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeah, this is really cool. Anyway, Miss Danielle, you can stop recording and then we'll let you guys tell us anything you want to tell us.